Good day and welcome to 4E TV. I'm so glad you chose to join us. I am privileged and honored to be a part of your life. Thank you so much for your love and encouragement. I appreciate that so much and thanks for tuning in today. Today is going to be a day like no other. I say that every day and I mean that every day. When you wake up in a day, you have an opportunity to affect that day in a positive way and leave the moments better than you found them. If we could all live with that mentality and all live with that drive and that passion, wouldn't the world be a cool and much better place? The only way we can do that is by having uh, experience with the love of God, by having a relationship with Jesus himself as I do. You know, here at 4E TV, we are all about taking care of you. When you take care of you, then you can take care of other people. We are about experiencing wellness, wellness God's way, that gives attention on a daily basis to our physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual selves so that we can experience that wellness the way God intended it and not walk around with sickness and disease and, and bent over and how are you feeling? I'm feeling crummy. I want you to feel vibrant, feel alive, full of vitality. I want you to go out of this earth with a sprint busting that tape. I don't want you to go out with a limp limping home. So we're trying to give you tools here on 4E TV to not just give you an extra quantity of life, but a higher quality of life the way God intended it because he wants us to be vibrant life. And friends, as Christian people, if you're a believer out there, I will challenge you with this. Wherever you go and whatever you say and whatever you do, people are watching. What kind of example do you portray? What kind of example are you? What is different about you than is the world? And friends, I submit to you that we need to take care of our temple because it needs to be different than the world. The world's a hurting place right now. As the standard American diet, or sad as we say, has increased in prevalence across this country, we see our health has declined severely across this country. We have higher instances of cancer here in this country than any other country in the world. Could it be related to our lifestyle and nutrition? The answer is yes, it is. And we need to get a hold of that fact right now because today's theme of the show is going to be called bad stomach bacteria. Before you say, yuck, that seems nasty, and well, it really is, I want, you to, kind of explain, I want to kind of explain to you that inside of our stomachs are an interesting ecological system. It has living organisms. It's a system that needs to be balanced. It can become dysfunctional, and it can be functional. But it has a real cool function for the health of our bodies. And it's more important than we think. So how does this ecological system inside of our stomach become dysfunctional? I searched the scriptures and I found the answers. Because as we alluded to earlier, our diet and what we do is key to our stomach health and key to our further health as far as our overall body health. Because all diseases, for the most part, not all of them, but most of them begin in the stomach with a dysfunction there. So I want you to get your Bibles today. I got my Bible. I recently got it recovered. It looks all nice and pretty and everything. But inside the pages are absolutely ruffled and torn. It's because I've been through the pages of this Bible. Not because I'm any good. and Not because I'm better than anybody else. But because it's, I know it's important to get into the Word of God. There's too many things being said out there today that are not balanced with the Word of God. And just because I say this Routinely, just because a minister says something to you, do not believe it. Become a professional skeptic. You hear what I'm saying? Become a professional skeptic. Always go back to God's Word. And if it doesn't line up with God's Word, it is not of God. Now, we're going to talk about today something that's talking about enemies of the cross. If something doesn't line up with the Word, it is not of God. If it's not of God, it's of the devil. It's of the enemy. And I don't mean to be harsh, but then again, I mean to be truthful. If it's not of God, it's of the devil. There's no gray area. He is love. He's about faith. The devil is about hate. He's about fear. So keeping that in mind, I want you to get your Bibles today. Get a cup of coffee, a cup of water, whatever you do, and sit down and just chill for the next 20 minutes or so because I want you to listen to what's going to be said today by 
the Word of God and also our special guest, which I will tell you about in just a moment. Now, I have my Bible, and I'm going to open it up to the book of Philippians. Philippians is almost to the end of the Bible. It's after the Gospels, and between the end of the Gospels, John and Revelation, and about the center there, you'll find Philippians right in the last quarter of the New Testament. So in Philippians chapter 3, I want us to begin reading in verse 12. Now Philippians is written by the Apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and I'll begin reading right, right now in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of, but one thing I do, I love this passage, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such the view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Listen in verse 17 very, very carefully. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even in tears, Many live as enemies of the cross, of Christ. Now, see, I, I got one more verse, but I'm going to stop right there and hear the passion in the Apostle Paul's voice. He's saying something again, even in tears. And man, I got to tell you, I get passionate about stuff sometimes, and tears well up, and I understand where he's coming from because it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when you're preaching or communicating a word that God has told you to communicate to the body of Christ or the world and people are not catching it. They say they catch it, but then they don't. And you repeat it again. And you want them to catch it so badly. It's so passionate and built up in you. You have this, this compassion welling up that's outwardly demonstrated by tears. So Paul has tears here as he's talking about many who are living as enemies of the cross. Listen. Their destiny is destruction. Their God, small g, small g, is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. Now, backing up in this passage, contextually speaking, Paul is talking about the dangers of allowing self-achievement to control us, or as we like to say, pride, what we can accomplish. He's clearly saying that many, not a few, many are going to live as enemies of the cross, enemies of Jesus. So what are their characteristics in verse 9? You can look at it. We know their destination is destruction. Their characteristics is this. They worship their stomach. They worship their pride. And they think about only the things of the earth. They worship their stomach. They worship their pride. And they think about only the things of the earth. What does it mean to worship your stomach? I'm going to say some things to you right now. And I want you to listen closely. Don't get offended because this is not designed to offend. This is designed to to, to teach the Word of God. If our whole world, if your whole life, if my whole life is revolved around food, my whole schedule is revolved around food, everything I do is centered around food, could it be that food has become my God? Could it be that the food, these taste buds I have, has been so controlling me in my life that it tells me what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it? See, food has become something that we've actually worshipped because look at the uh, inundation with fast food restaurants. We have to have something now that's always about food, but we live in a culture of gluttony. I have, lived, I have traveled around the world extensively, and I tell you, we have it all. We have it all in not just abundance, but overabundance. We have so much. Have you ever been in a restaurant or at someone's house and they've said these words to you? Or they ask you this question? Did you save room for dessert? Think about that one. Did you save room for dessert? Did you save room for sugars? Those sugars that are going to kill you? Those sugars that are going to damage your body irreparably as the years come? Those sugars that have consequences attached? Friends, haven't we done this long enough? Haven't we allowed this food to control us long enough? The characteristics of those that have the 
that are enemies of the cross of Christ, one characteristic of the three, not my word, but God's word, their God is their stomach. Why do you think God put this here? Why do you think he said this? Because it's true then and it's true today. When we begin to worship food, we begin to worship our stomach, we begin to get in trouble. And it begins to control everything we are. I'm not knocking uh, ministries out there. I'm saying when the whole thing's about food, I've heard people say this before. Let's go have an eat-a-thon. Really? Do we really want to go uh, celebrate gluttony? We don't need to do that. It's time to wake up and go back to God's word. Our stomach does not need to be our God. It's become a great deception in America because our stomachs have become gods at some times. And when our stomachs become gods, this whole ecological system in our stomach becomes dysfunctional because of the poor quality of foods we eat. So, with that said, we know dysfunction causes problems to our body. We're going to talk about that today. How do we fix this dysfunction? The answer is found in this term called probiotics. With that said, we have our favorite, most awesome, wonderful, and very beautiful guest, Dr. Neal, who's with us today. Thank you for coming back today. Really appreciate that. I'm glad to be back, Mark. Probiotics. I hear antibiotics all the time. We take those things. What are probiotics and how can they be good for us? Probiotics are defined as living organisms that live in our GI tract. They are the healthy bacteria, if you will. Our gut has uh, its own ecology in the different areas of the, of the system, from the esophagus to the stomach to the small intestine to the bowel. Each area has a different ecology. And the ecology in each area needs to be balanced. When the probiotic balance of that particular ecology gets out of, out of balance, we end up having gut issues. Those are symptoms of bloating and gas and abdominal distension and weight gain and just not feeling well, just the blues, the blahs. Uh, people will, patients will come into my office all the time with digestive dysfunction and oftentimes it is the fact that the ecology of the gut has gotten out of balance. This ecology is part of our immune system. We need to think of it as an immune function in our gut. So as practitioners, when we give an antibiotic, an antibiotic is not only anti-bacteria, bad bacteria, it's also anti pro Probiotics, probacteria. Now, now, hold on a minute, because I hear that all the time. People say these words to me, i got to go get an antibiotic. And it's almost like this constant thing, they're always on antibiotics. So if that's the case, what's happening? We are not only taking out the bad bacteria, but are, we're also taking down or dysregulating the flora, the balance of the good bacteria. So when we dysregulate or take down the balance of the good bacteria, what happens in our body? What, what do we see? We start to see a weakening of the immune system, and then we start to see more gut dysfunction and more disorders around the, the gastrointestinal tract, like irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, now, I've heard of that. That's, that's where they can have either constipation or diarrhea, either or, correct? Or bloating, distension, weight gain, just gut dysfunction. So we know that antibiotics are going to kill the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria, but what, what role does food or, or poor food quality play in the, in the probiotics, the good bacteria in our, in our system? Well, the GI lining, the mucosal lining of the gut, all the way from the esophagus to the large bowel, is teamed with this friendly bacteria. It is part of the integrity of the mucosal system, the mucosal lining of the gut that lines our intestinal tract. So when the probiotic balance or the ecology breaks down, the lining of the gut starts to break down, and then it subjects our body to absorbing harmful substances from the outside that that mucosal barrier is used to keeping out. So the poor food and the antibiotics can cause problems, but when people are getting more sick, they're taking more antibiotics. It seems like to me we're on this, I think you use the term gerbil wheel, and there's, there's nothing happening. Is that kind of where we are right now? That, that's correct. Instead of looking to what the cause of gut dysfunction is, is it truly an, a bacterial infection or is it poor diet to begin with? Or did we need an antibiotic and just not replace the probiotic friendly ecology to rebalance the gut after we take a, an antibiotic? Okay, so you mentioned the antibiotics killing it off. Once it's dead, how do we get it back in there? That's the support with a probiotic. 
Okay, what is a probiotic? I mean, how does it come? Is it, is it a shot? Is it something you drink? What is it? Probiotics can come in many forms. You can even get them in Greek yogurt, which is a plain form of yogurt. It's cultured with lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. Those are the cultures that the yogurt is actually fermented in. So you can support your gastrointestinal system simply by adding Greek yogurt to your nutritional program. Also, if you need a higher level of probiotics, perhaps you've been sick for a while or you've had to take several rounds of antibiotics, or even after I prescribe a round of antibiotics, I will have a patient go through a month to three months of probiotics. So can a person take probiotics while they're taking antibiotics? The answer to that question is yes. You wouldn't necessarily want to take the antibiotic and the probiotic at the same time. You would want to separate them in space and time while you're taking the antibiotic. So if you take your antibiotic first thing in the morning, you may want to separate the probiotic in space and time by four hours. Do, Probiotics, there, I've seen a lot of commercials on TV, um, and I'm not clear on this, but sometimes I've heard that probiotics, uh, they, they can get damaged or, or they lose their life, if you will, through heat, through shelf life, through humidity, and then some of them are, uh, are put in uh, refrigerators. So any thoughts on that, how that works? It's going to depend upon the company that actually makes the probiotic and packages them. There are certain companies that do have the rights on packaging probiotics that can tolerate certain exposure to light and certain amounts of heat that they can be stable at room temperature. But to be safe, probiotics, if you're not actively using them, put them in the refrigerator, keep them in a dark environment. Mm. What, how long does someone need to be on a, a, a probiotic? Let's say, do, do they just do it for a time? Three months, or is it, is it for the rest of our lives? If you have GI dysfunction and you're in a situation where you have an irritable bowel or you're working with a practitioner, you may be the individual that is on probiotics for life. Every system is different. In a healthy immune system, it's good to support the gastrointestinal system at least three times a year. Just like we go through a metabolic detox or a cleansing process of the system twice a year, to put the probiotics in there in the spring, summer, and fall to just go through a, a bottle three times a year is a very healthy thing to do. That's a good idea. I, I had never thought of that before, but um, you know what she's saying is we need to continue to replenish the good bacteria in this ecological system in our stomach because it's, it's got a propensity or tendency to be destroyed over time. Now, with this bacteria, in our, in our systems, we've mentioned that antibiotics can destroy it. Um, poor food choices can destroy it. Is there anything else that can, can destroy it or upset that, that um, balance in the ecological system? Well, medications can destroy it. The overuse of anti-inflammatories can destroy the mucal lining and definitely upset the ecological balance of the intestinal tract. There are uh, caffeine, excessive amounts of acidic food like coffee, too much tea can upset the ecological balance, as well as too much alcohol. We often see an upset, we see collagenous colitis or bowel dysfunction come from the consumption of too much alcohol as well. How does that damage the bacteria? Is it, is it in the digestive process? How does that work? The, the lining becomes upset, which is where the probiotics embed themselves and live, is they live within the little villi and around the mucosal lining that line the small bowel and the large bowel. And if that lining gets upset or inflamed, there's less surface area for that uh, friendly bacteria to inhabit. So if, if their environment gets upset, it's much like these uh, animals who become extinct when the environment, their, their own environment begins to get destroyed. They don't have anywhere to live. That's correct. Is that the same principle? Yes. Because it's really funny that you know, we see all this happening in our stomach, and you mentioned some things like the, the, the gas, the bloating, the feeling miserable. I mean, that is a, those are common things you probably hear a lot, right? Yes, and the, the friendly bacteria aid in the digestive process. So if you're unable to fully digest your food, you're going to have an increased incidence of gas and bloating and simple gut dysfunction. And it's something as simple as 
making sure this ecological system in our stomach is in balance, in harmony. That's right. It, it, it seems so simple, and all the things you tell us through the course of these, um, these teachings, it seems so simple, but yet you probably still see this over and over and over again of gut dysfunction and the, the systematic failures of our body after that. Right, we go back to our fundamentals. You've got to remove the garbage that's going in so we stop the damage. Mm. We've got to remove the offending agents. Then we replace it with the enzymes or the friendly flora that the gut needs so that the gut lining, the mucosal lining, and the ecology can restore itself from the top to the bottom. And it has crossover. Think about how your digestive tract is confluent with your respiratory tract. They are connected. So when the ecological balance gets out of balance in the gut, chances are your allergies just in, in the environment will go up because that respiratory tract will be easier to at, become agitated from environmental allergens if the gut is out of balance. That's amazing because what you're talking about that simple principle of garbage in, garbage out, but you, you want to get the garbage out, but, but we see just like in our, in our, our theme in Philippians chapter 3 when, when we are so set on the stomach becoming our God, we are putting things in there and it's not going to be good things because as an enemy of the cross, the enemy of the body would be an enemy of the cross too, right? That's correct. I mean, so many times we don't think about what we've eaten after we've eaten it. We never give it a second thought. And the fact that just like exercise, that effect from exercise shows up in your system two to three days later. You're the most sore two to three days after you've exercised. The same is true with the gut. Two to three days later, you start to feel the effects of the breakdown of what was happening in your uh, GI system once it can fully process and the system has been in contact with that long enough to really be able to sort things out. It seems like because our society is more a microwave type society, we want the results right now and don't want to wait. It seems like that, that the, because the consequences of of doing the things that's causing gut dysfunction don't show up for a couple days later. We don't think about it because we're so used to having things right now. Would you say that's probably why we haven't grasped this concept of the danger of putting these things in us and, and, and taking out the bad bacteria? Yes, we're, we're just now starting to really discover that too much gluten is not such a good thing, that those things are causing joint pains and malaise and, and autoimmune phenomenon, increased inflammation to happen in the system. But we, since we don't have, our gut doesn't have a voice, we don't have an immediate feedback system to say, oh, that hamburger wasn't good for me, or oh, that's causing my joints to ache, or oh, that's causing my back to be stiff, or causing my brain to be a little foggy. It takes a long time for those blood sugars to finally be sky high, and that all comes through, you know, in, in a lot of instances, it comes through over-gluttonous behavior of excessive processed foods, carbohydrates, and, and eating too much all the time. If the stomach has become the God. Correct. It, it's amazing, folks, that we're, we're seeing this over and over again. And, and I hope you're really listening because this is valuable information. And Dr. Neal said that uh, the gut doesn't have the voice. But I truly believe this, that through people such as Dr. Neal who are gifted to communicate the principles and the, the ideals of health, of ideal health, that the gut is beginning to speak. It's beginning to speak through people. And that's not to say she's a, um, a person who represents the stomach, but she is talking the factual principles of stomach health. So the stomach is getting a voice of sorts. So listen to the voice that you're hearing and begin to take care of the stomach. It's amazing as we look at our passage of scripture and I was blown away when I looked at those who were enemies of the cross had their stomach as their God. It is not something to play around with. It is not something to take for granted. We need to really pay a close attention to what we're putting in our mouth and what we're doing to our bodies every day. When we pay close attention to it, we think just a second, how is this affecting my stomach health? How is this affecting my ecological system in my body. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be get bad? Not looking at it how I feel, but what's it going to do based on the teachings? I hope you've written this stuff down today. If you have any questions about what's been happening on these programs, about probiotics or any other subject, please get a hold of Dr. Neal on her website. Contact her and ask those questions. There's great information there 
regarding articles and blogs that you can access for free. You can also access um, the Forever Fit Life website and you will see plenty of articles there. Many times we share articles back and forth. You will see those transposed on one or the other because we really want to get the information out there to as many persons as we can because we don't have to live sick and beat up. I wish people would be sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're giving you answers to get well. I want you to be well. And speaking of being well, we bought some, brought some products with us today that I want to just highlight very quickly. They're sitting on the table here with me. And actually, there are three things that I want to highlight today. Number one is this. It is a high-quality whey protein. Now, we need proteins in our system, of course. Proteins have amino acids which help us rebuild and have some other uh, beneficial properties. At the same time, we don't want to get protein that's low quality. And protein is such a big buzzword these days. We want to make sure that we get high quality protein. This is the highest quality whey protein you're going to find anywhere in the country. It is grass-fed, hormone-free cows. They're actually, in this one, sourced out of South Australia. So that's a long way to go for a cow. But wherever you've got to go to get the pure cow that's not hormone-filled, we'll do it. We also have an herbal remedy here that's going to regulate your cortisol, your leptin, and your insulin. We also have three levels of activity DVDs, a basic that's designed for everybody. If you can walk, you can do it. 14 activity sessions over a four-week period. I guarantee you, you will be successful. It wears me out to hear people come to me and say, I tried that. And they'll name off some exercise system. This one is not like that. This is a, a tool the Lord has used to bless a lot of people, to give them some success, to let them know what it means to be a, a victor in life and not be defeated all the time. When they finish this, they will say, you know what? I did that. I get letters, cards, little notes all the time about people that are so excited, whether they be 50 or 60 or 70 years old, that are saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I have something that I can do and be successful. So I want you to really Take advantage and avail yourself of these products. Get on our website too. Sign up for our free newsletter as well as our brand new I Have Value Pledge. Get on that worldwide movement and pledge to have value in your life, realizing that you do have value. We realize other people have value. What about you, friend? Do you have value? There's also a way you can donate and support this ministry if you choose to. If God lays it on your heart, go there right now and give according to what God wants you to give. We are a tax-deductible um, nonprofit. You'll be given a tax receipt as the law allows. I want you to be blessed today. I hope this information has blessed you. I know we've been blessed sharing it, so God bless you and have a wonderful day.